Okay, hello, and welcome to MSUA Game Changers, where we speak with satellite and mobile connectivity thought leaders about industry trends and share what you need to know about the future of mobile satellite communications. I'm your host, Roger Lanto, and I'm excited to introduce Henrik Axelson, CEO of KenCast. KenCast is a pioneer in the secure, reliable, and efficient delivery of valuable content. KenCast has an extensive patent portfolio, and its customers include the U.S. military, leading motion picture studios, major global corporations, and cutting-edge solution partners. We are talking with Henrik today in connection with the company's announced partnership with R4 and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to provide wireless real-time communications for NOAA's Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Kind of a timely topic, we think. We may also talk a little bit about twisters and maybe even get a word or two in on CrowdStrike. But uh, welcome, Henrik. Tell me a little bit about yourself and KenCast with particular attention to the solutions you are offering and the markets you are targeting. Sure. Well, thank you for having me, Roger. Uh, so I joined a little bit about myself first. So I joined KenCast 2006 as a senior software developer and had various different positions. Uh, from then until now, currently I'm the CEO. I uh, worked a bunch on different, uh, our fast content delivery software, that's the core product we're offering. Also worked a lot on our forward error correction algorithms, that's uh, part of the core value we're providing. Uh, I'm natively from uh, Sweden, and I came to the US 2001, uh, did a PhD at Georgia Tech, and 2006 joined KenCast. Now the solutions, oh sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, please continue. Uh, the solutions we provide that focus on reliable, secure, and efficient content delivery. Those are really the three tenants of what we provide. It's mainly over wireless networks, but also over wired networks. So it's typically high value content. Uh, the core product we're providing is called uh, FAST. It's F A Z Z T. It's a very feature rich platform that's been developed now for nearly 30 years. Um, so, many different content delivery options so whatever whatever the need is on how to deliver content most likely is already in the platform because we have hundreds of customers in this day handles file and stream delivery or both multicast and ucast networks both fixed and mobile sites interesting so i wanted to talk to you because you just had this announcement uh, last week about this product for mobile communications from the hurricane hunter aircraft so tell me a little bit about GeoNetCast and how that led to the connection with R4 and NOAA's Hurricane Hunters. Sure. So we've been working with NOAA since uh, 2006. Uh, we provide a content delivery system for their data dissemination. It's a global one-way satellite multicast network. And uh, so one-way multicast network of satellite, you need reliable delivery. And that's where we co come in and R4. They've been working a lot with the U.S. Department of Defense, equipping aircrafts, and they were tasked to find a solution to really get this data that's been collecting through, typically, I think a mission is 11 hours when the hurricane hunters fly their C-130s into the middle of the hurricanes, quite frankly, and they sit there and bump around and collect all this data. And uh, up until we provided this solution together with R4, this data was recorded on the airplane and 11 hours later, once the mission was done, it was transferred to NOAA. Um, so the solution, the value we added here is real-time data transmission from the airplane to the ground and then on to NOAA in real time to speed up the transfer of that data. How is, do you have a sense of how that's changing uh, what they're doing or what they can do with the information? Uh, not exactly, but you know, this hurricane data is time critical. It was a need that they had. Um, so I'm, I'm sure it would be very valuable to have the hands on the data sooner rather than later. And it sounds like it's a similar kind of a transition, uh, like the one you told me about in the uh, cinema and the, the, the theater industry where it used they used to use hard drives. What What is the history there and how is how are films distributed now? Sure. Yeah, so first it was celluloids and then there were the hard drives, which was a big advantage. And uh, we've been involved with theatrical or cinema content delivery since the early 2000s for various system integrators. But uh, 2012, the studios and exhibitors came together. It was AMC, Regal, and Cinemark, Universal, and Warner. 
they formed a consortium, Digital Cinema Distribution Coalition, uh, with the aim of really standardizing content delivery. And um, there was a shootout, different technology providers, and Ken Kess was chosen as the technology provider for DCDC, and that was in 2012. And today we have uh, throughout North and South America, who are two customers, DCDC and Cinecolo, we have over 5,000 theaters deployed with our solution. It's a satellite and terrestrial hybrid solution with the bulk of it going on satellite. What is the terrestrial component? Uh, some sites um, can't have a satellite connectivity or they have a lot of unique content where satellite multicast is not efficient. Uh, so we also have a terrestrial solution utilizing either CDN or point-to-point -point connectivity. Right, it's from the same platform, so it's a unified network. And how long, uh, one of the other key value adds that you were discussing with me was the forward error correction. Now, I'm not a software coder and neither am I an engineer. Uh, can you explain the significance and the importance of this and maybe even uh, with the context of what we just went through with CrowdStrike with a failed uh, software update, uh, bringing almost bringing the economy down? Sure, I mean, I could talk about for hours about this, but I won't, <laughs> don't, don't worry. Uh, for the error correction, it's a very simple form is that um, you have some content you want to send out and you send some extra content out such that when it's being received, let's say in the 5,000 movie theater is a movie, um, that extra data is being sent out together with the original movie can be used to repair for data that was lost in transmission. Um, and we have a bunch of different algorithms. The latest one, which we call Smart FEC, actually we send out no nothing of the original file. The only thing we send out is uh, for their correction packets. And each and every packet can be used to reconstruct any part of the file for any one of the receivers. And this turns out to be very efficient for, especially for mobile mobile users. And um, you were. Uh on the, the ATSC 3.0 webinar earlier today. Uh, and I'm kind of curious of how do you uh, sort of position satellite connectivity with uh, all these other competing technologies? Where, you know, what, what determines whether, you know, satellite is used as opposed to some other technology? Sure, so we, we're kind of agnostic. We're on the IP level. Um, so we work in many different mediums. Uh, actually, we had a lot of trials with ATSC 3.0 with delivering content having cars roaming between towers, delivering what would what, what could be a firmware update file. So we had uh, been part in two recent trials doing that. Uh, in this case, without the multi-market, really the determining factor is the cost of the antenna. Um, the electro electronic steerable flat phased array antennas, they're still quite expensive. Um, if you want good speed, they can be in the tens of thousands of dollars, but there's there's nothing in the sub one thousand dollars can go on a car, and I think that's in the automotive market. That's the driving factor there. Where ATSC three point zero antenna is very cost effective. And what are the? How has your business evolved over the years in terms of both the kinds of uh, services and solutions that you're offering, as well as the kinds of customers that you're serving? How, how has that changed? Because you've obviously been at Kencast for quite some time. Yeah. No. So the business is really can be divided into three different categories. One is the defense. We, that's about a third of our business. We have large contracts with the US Department of Defense. Um, biggest one is the DISAS Global Broadcasting System, where it's about 5,000 endpoints going to everything from military bases, troops in the fields, UAVs, and they have a need for satellite communication. Um, we keep developing, implement new features there, but the core of it has not changed that much. We see a change in uh, the cinema, which is the second of our third markets. Uh, there is some desire to go terrestrial for sure. And we've been uh, providing a unified platform for that. As the terrestrial connectivity gets better, then uh, the, the, that's taking over part of the satellite network. Uh, in terms of the mobile market and the other markets like digital signage in those markets, mobility market has been a huge increase with demand of content on the go uh, airplanes boats cars so we've seen a huge uptick in activity where people just need content on the go and that's been a growth area for us 
Will we see KenCast in the automotive business? We're hoping so. And we have some uh, projects going on right now. So let's let's <laughs> let's see where it takes us. OK, uh, so uh, thank you, Henrik, for taking the time today to uh, talk about that that Hurricane Hunter solution and the other uh, work that KenCast is doing forward error correction, et cetera. Uh, I want to thank the Mobile Satellite Users Association for hosting these sessions. You can learn more about the MSUA at msua.org. Where can people learn more about KenCast? They can follow us on uh, LinkedIn, on Twitter, and also our webpage, KenCast.com. And reach out to us anytime, please. Excellent. You can learn how to get your get the MSUA weekly newsletter at msua.org. That gives you updates on everything that's happening in the industry and shares information about upcoming events. And you can also find out how to become a member. We look forward to seeing you next time on MSUA's Game Changers Live. And Henrik, thank you again. Thank you, Roger.